Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me. I am still T Masso at thewatchbox.com. It is still in the description below. It is your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any of our platforms. Please reach out to me. I am still T Masso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. Launched in 2013, the Blanc Path 50 Fathoms Bathyscaphe is slightly smaller and more historically inspired than the more contemporary, larger, and outwardly opulent reference 5015. But this reference 5000 is technically identical to the 5015 in capabilities, finish, and utility. What makes this different from most bathyscaphs I feature is that it includes the X71 bracelet commonly associated with the 5015, it's rarely seen on a reference 5000. So let's talk about how it fits and feels, but first, dimensions. In stainless steel, the bathyscaphe is 43 millimeters in diameter, 13.5 millimeters thick, from lug tip to lug tip, 49.8 millimeters, but we include the end links of this bracelet. It's a broader, 52.7 millimeters across the wrist with a 23 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Now, there is a bracelet design commonly associated with the bathyscaphe. This is not it. This is generally associated with its older brother. It changes the look of the watch and makes it more contemporary. It's also somewhat easier to wear as there's a great deal of articulation and flexibility here. The watch itself is suitable for a wrist as small as 15 centimeters circumference, but I'm going to say that on this solid end link bracelet, you're going to want to wear the watch on a wrist of 60 like mine or larger. Again, you can easily take the bracelet off and put it on a strap, but on the bracelet, you're going to want to wear it on a 16 centimeter circumference wrist and up. On a strap, 15 centimeters and up. It's not super thick, but it does have a rather sheer side vertical, as you can see. And as a result, it will get hung up on the tightest of dress sleeves, though it'll fit underneath most shirt cuffs and all jacket sleeves. Over the top, you can see it's quite broad and pushing right out to the edge of my wrist down the barrel. Taking a quick look at that bracelet, you can see a conforming end link matching both the curvature of the case and the slope of the lugs. We have staggered link size and alignment, and you can see the countersink of link into link, which results in very little lateral play and an incredible feeling of solidity without compromising supple motion and flexibility over the skin. Taking a look at the bottom, you can also see that there's a little bit of channeling between the links to avoid pinching skin, pulling hair, or trapping wrist heat. Every single link is removable. You can see how they're constructed from the bottom. That's how you size this bracelet. So with every link removable, you have a good chance of getting the right fit. We have here a double folding clasp and then trigger release. So you can't open it by just pressing one. You have to press both. It's a non-sequential close, so either side can close first. The only real criticism I can make here, because it's beautifully built and looks the part, there is no micro adjustment or pull-out dive extension that might be useful over a diving suit. But if you really want to use it over a suit, just throw it on a textile for easy, quick adjustment. Okay, jumping back, you can see that this is more heritage inspired than the 5015. Notice too that everything is satinated to resist glare and give the watch a muted appearance, whereas most 5015s are high polish. We have these squared off heritage inspired lugs with minimal beveling, a very sheer and undifferentiated blended lug case profile, a vintage big crown no guard look that works on this watch. And then you can see we have a combination of media blasted recesses and a satin finished exterior on the bezel. And the bezel actually has a little bit of a facet on its top to contrast with its side. We have a 120 click action. Let's hear it. It's quite refined. The feel and the sound are positive. We have a ceramic insert with what's known as a liquid metal. So ceramic is highly scratch resistant. Unlike an older anodized aluminum bezel insert, this one won't scratch up and scuff. The metal that you see for the numerals and the indices is co-molded to the ceramic so it will never ever separate. That is why it is called liquid metal. Now, we have a luminescent pearl. We have applique, one might call them cabochon style indices, as well as a counterweighted lollipop style second sand, and then hybrid syringe baton hands for the hours and for the minutes. We'll fire everything up so you can see the watch in action, and then we'll do the loom shot. Here we go. Those three mainspring barrels jumping into action. By the way, the watch, three mainspring barrels, and a five-day power reserve, 120 hours. Loom shot now. 
I wanted to wind it to emphasize that all three hands are loomed. I think every dive watch should declare immediately whether it's running in the dark, whether you're diving at night or diving deep. And for some reason, not every dive watch has a loomed second sand. I think a constant operation in the dark is very important. You can also see how I can easily and quickly line up my minute hand with the luminescent pearl on the bezel. And then I've got a zero to 60 minute timer. I always find dive bezels easier to use, more natural to read and indisputably cheaper to service down the line than chronographs. So the dial features a little window between four and five. Some people like that it doesn't replace an index. Some people object to the placement. I'm neutral on it. I think the watch as a whole looks awesome. We have a gray dial. It's an anthracite, so somewhere between gray and black with a metallic sunburst, and then all of the features of the dial are rhodium plated for a silvery shine. We have a hacking or stop seconds function. Screw out the crown. By the way, 300 meter diving depth, the same as the 5015. So stop seconds just like that. And then we have a quick set system so you can rapidly cycle the date should the watch run down or encounter an irregular length month. Turn it all over. And again, mechanically identical to the 5015. Caliber 1315, nicely sized for a large display case back. Three barrels in series, 120 hours of power reserve. Hacking seconds, quick set date, four hertz beat rate, free sprung for precise adjustment and durability against shock with an anti-magnetic silicon hairspring, 35 pivot jewels, and six position adjustment, one more than a standard chronometer. You can see there's a couple of different finishes on the gold rotor, which has been blackened. The recesses in the interior with media blast, a satin channel around the edge. And then you can see that it's also mirror beveled on its side. And a fourth finish, there's a sort of snailing on the outer rim. Take a look at the snailing across the bridges, a lovely modern look, befitting the watch. I, I think ultimately being a high luxury modern product, I, I'm pleased that they didn't go with some sort of Cote de Genève, which would look out of place on a utility diver. Notice how big the bevels are. These are some of the most impressive bevels, both in their rounded shine and their size on any series production watch that I've encountered. There's satination and solarization, depending on which wheel you're actually looking at. You could see that there is solarization on the ratchet wheel, as well as on the crown wheel and then satination on other wheels. All screw heads are black polished, chamfered, and slotted. And you can see that they even beveled, reamed, and polished the jewel sinks, which is just glorious. I like everything about this watch. This could be your daily driver. If for some reason you're burned out on Rolex, you want something that's finer and more capable than a Royal Oak Offshore Diver, or you want to stick it to Richard Mille for one-tenth of the price and three times the watch, in the dive class, this thing's hard to beat. A true high-luxury haute de gamme hand-finished dive watch for, frankly, less than pre-owned Rolex pricing, and it's got rarity to match. Reach out to Team also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. And in case I neglected to mention, 120 click bezel action. Again, reach out to Team also at thewatchbox.com for pricing.